name is Lynette Hall and I'm making this video to document my family's connection with the healthcare industry in America. In this video, you will be learning about my grandfather and his struggle with progressive supranuclear palsy, which is known as PSP. Um, and then also my parents, how they met in the hospital, my grandparents, how they met in the hospital, and all these different connections, how they tie in with the American healthcare industry. Thank you again for watching. It means a lot to be able to share my family's story and also my uh, grandfather's personal struggle with progressive supranuclear palsy, PSP, and together we will find a cure. Okay, I am a, I'm a registered nurse. I've been doing this for 25 years. I work in a hospital setting. That's where I've always worked, except a couple months at a nursing home. And I just, I treat all kinds of patients. I have, there's not a specialty. I'm a um, tele med surge nurse right now. Tele med surge is patients on telemetry and they're medical surgical patients. So you can get any type of medical problem to any kind of surgical problem. Okay, right now in Las Vegas, I work in Desert Springs Hospital. I've been there since 2009. Um, what I would say I like about it is when patients are appreciative of what we do and other than that, that I can support, help support our family with the paycheck and we do have health insurance for everyone in the family through the hospital. Desert Springs Hospital is a 293-bed acute care facility that has been providing quality health care to residents of Southern Nevada since 1971. They are known for their reputation as being a leader in cardiac care. Desert Springs Hospital is a part of the Valley Health Care System, which consists of six acute care hospitals throughout the Southern Nevada community. Hey, I met my husband in a hospital um, in Ohio called Altman Hospital that was in 1997. He was a social worker and I was an RN on the same floor. And he had to leave our floor after we started dating. I'm a social worker at Mountain View Hospital. I'm a licensed social worker in the state of Nevada. Also in the state of Ohio, I work at like a 450 bed hospital. Usually when I get there in the morning, uh, there's a team of social workers there. We work in the case management department. Um, our job is we assist patients in uh, discharge dispositions, try to hook them up with services, uh, deal with undocumented individuals, issues with families, people that have uh, legal issues, psychiatric issues, um, and of course physical issues. I work in the acute care hospital in the inpatient setting. We do have uh, clinics which would be more outpatient. Uh, sometimes they call me there to deal with crisis or issues with families, insurance, um, discharge dispositions. Um, I do cover the CDU unit sometimes, just observation patients are down there. It's a very challenging and uh, busy career. Sometimes I feel like I help people, other times due to the factors of insurance, uh, citizenship, um, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, all that all combined. Sometimes it feels like we don't do our best with the patients, but we always try our best. Mountain View Hospital is a 408-bed acute care teaching hospital that provides intensive care, neurological services, surgical, heart care, emergency, orthopedic, oncology, women's services, and outpatient services. Mountain View Hospital has been nationally recognized for their renowned Las Vegas Institute for Robotic Surgery. Mountain View is a member of the respected Sunrise Healthcare System. I used to work in the hospital uh, for about 12 years in Ohio, 600 bed hospital. There, uh, compared to living in Las Vegas, there's a, a difference in the type of patients, coverage, and so forth. Uh, a lot of undocumented individuals <clears throat> in Nevada as compared to Ohio. Um, more homeless population out here we have to deal with. Um, and I would say less people have insurance out here. 
until the uh, Affordable Care Act. Now I'd say it's about even with the first five, six years I worked out here before about four years, five years ago. Um, there was a large population here that had no coverage at all. Uh, I'm married to my wife Anita. She's a registered nurse here also in Las Vegas at a different hospital. I've been married, it's gonna be 22 years here in about a day. Uh, we met in the hospital. She was a nurse, I was a social worker on the floor. Uh, she was very attractive and caring, so that's what drew me to her. Uh, eventually she went out with me and then we got married soon after that. We have one daughter. The reason why I went into the medical profession and became an LPN, which is a licensed practical nurse, is I worked as an aide for a few months graduating from high school, going into the hospital. I enjoyed the, the gratification I got from helping people. And so we didn't have the money to go to a four-year program or a three-year program. This was an 18-month program. So I applied and was accepted into several different schools in the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area. And I went to school and became a licensed practical nurse. I worked at a medical facility called St. Francis Medical Center, which was in Pittsburgh. And so we took care of the patient holistically, the whole person. Now, as the years have gone by, I've, I've worked in other facilities, um, and I've also had experience with my parents being ill and the medical profession. And I noted that there was a huge change. The patient didn't seem to be the most important part of our function or the nurse's function. The nurses work very hard and um, they try to uh, take care of the patient holistically, but it's very difficult when the staffing is low and when documentation is seems to be more important than patient care. Um, I was 21 years old and working in St. Francis Medical Center when I met my husband, who is from India and who was worked as an, as an anesthesiologist for eight years in India before coming to the States. This is in, 19, in the late 1960s uh, when there was a shortage of doctors in our area and they, um, a lot of doctors from other countries came and practiced and did their internship and residence. And uh, Victor was, my husband was considered a, an esthetist here in the States. Um, since he wasn't only here on a student visa, he had to leave the country to apply for citizenship. We were married and had one child at the time. I was still working as a nurse, at, as an LPN at St. Francis Hospital, and my husband was also there attending school at St. Francis Hospital. So he transferred to South America, Guyana, South America, and there we lived for two years, and he practiced anesthesia there. He was the only anesthesiologist in the country. So he was a very busy fellow. And we came back to the United States. I would like to introduce you to my husband, who was diagnosed four years ago with Progressive Supranuclear Palsy, PSP. Progressive Supranuclear Palsy, known as PSP, is a neurodegenerative disease with no cause and no cure. PSP affects brain cells that control balance, walking, coordination, eye movement, speech, swallowing, and thinking. Only 20,000 Americans have been diagnosed with PSP, making it a very rare disease. It is a difficult disease to diagnose and oftentimes is misdiagnosed because of its close resemblance to Parkinson's. PSP can be described as being a cross between Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and ALS. Fortunately, there is an organization there to help. They're called Cure PSP. Cure PSP is the leading nonprofit organization that works to improve the awareness, education, care, and cure for devastating prime of life neurodegenerative diseases. 
My family has received valuable information packets and materials from Cure PSP that has taught us about the rare disease that my grandfather suffers with. We, along with the families of those that also deal with PSP firsthand, are grateful for the work that this organization does. I practiced anesthesia for 50 years. Enjoyed my work. I was a good anesthetist. I died at 75 years. An anesthetist is the medical specialist that administers anesthesia to patients. They monitor the patients throughout the time of receiving and recovering from anesthesia. My grandfather primarily worked in the labor and delivery department of the hospital, focusing on pregnant mothers providing epidurals during labor. I met my wife in the hospital. I worked on the IV team at the time, at the time, and I, I fell in love with her. And I married her and we had two boys. I'm doing a career, good medical career. I'm going to see a neurologist. He's supposed to be a specialist. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping he'll help me. My experience, my husband went, went to go to Cleveland Clinic in Las Vegas to see a very specialized physician. We go by referrals with our insurance, meaning that the, uh, our regular doctor, our general doctor who takes care of us, who we see for wellness visits and for illnesses, um, gave us a referral to Cleveland Clinic, but we did not, the, the insurance did not approve it. So we waited a while and the neurologist in Henderson gave us an approval. And then with the approval of the neurologist and the approval of our regular physician, we did get the appointment. But that took several, several months, which is difficult when you're kind of working on a time system and every day um, something different happens with the, with the issues medical issues and the condition of my husband. There's been a, a large change in the last six months, but I'm thankful that we got the appointment. It is in May, so after seeing the specialist, we'll go from there. My grandpa's appointment at the Cleveland Clinic Lou Ruvo Center for Brain Health is an important milestone in his journey to healthier living with PSP. Finally, after years of doctor's appointments, referrals, and insurance battles, he has this appointment. The Cleveland Clinic is consistently ranked as one of the nation's best hospitals. The Lou Ruvo Center for Brain Health specifically has been named among the best in the nation for diseases like Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, ALS, multiple sclerosis, Huntington's disease, and PSP. They have been named one of the first five Cure PSP centers of care in the United States. So my grandfather and my family are optimistic for what help they can provide. Um, we, are on, we are on Medicare. Uh, we've been on it ever since the age of 65. Um, and I feel that our care in Ohio is not up to standards. They did not diagnose my husband in Ohio. They did a, a, a CT scan, but refused to do an MRI. When we moved to the state of Nevada, Henderson, Nevada, I felt the care was much better here. I understand that every state is different with Medicare, but I feel that the care here was better. They did diagnose him, so we were able to deal with the situation. And the insurance was United Healthcare, which we are completely satisfied with at the moment. Um, when you do get older and you do depend on Medicare and why they call it an entitlement, I just quite don't understand because both of us have worked all our life and have paid into Medicare. And I think it's a great system. And I think it works well. It has worked well for us in most cases. 
I know everyone has different uh, issues, and but for for us and for family members who are on Medicare and who have been on Medicare for quite well, or quite well for my mother and father also in the state of Pennsylvania. We still all have a lot of hope. We love them very much. We hope that they'll come up with a cure or some sort of uh, uh, medication or procedure that would at least eliminate the progression of the disease. Um, my mom is his caretaker. Uh, she's an amazing woman. She has to take care of him 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, my dad still can smile at times and laugh, but his personality has changed dramatically. And it's, uh, like I said, with his motor skills, difficult time walking, shaking, swallowing. It's a nasty disease. It's different than Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, dementia. Um, it's, it's been very difficult for all of us, but we keep faith in God and we keep trucking along. Um, and my father-in-law with the um, PSP, having been a nurse for 25 years in school before that, I have never heard the diagnosis PSP before. It is um, very sad that there hasn't been any research, much research done, no cure, no, not a lot of help. And it's just one step at a time with the, not a very good prognosis. My grandparents and parents have spent their whole careers in the medical profession. Both couples met their future partner in the hospital through their professions. Therefore, the healthcare system basically has given me my family and I am very lucky. Now my grandparents are about to celebrate their 50th wedding anniversary. And though they are facing their own medical challenges, through love, family support, and the proper advanced medical care, we are hopeful for the healthy and healing future to come.